Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Arc Raider. We're going to start by optimizing Windows, and after that we're going to take a look on your Nvidia and Radiant settings, and after that we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings, and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is Game Bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue, and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture. Capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power uh back then uh, we were recommending to use the best performance but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that Another thing uh, I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for the NVIDIA settings. So first of all, make sure that you update your NVIDIA driver to have your the latest one. They have an Arc Raider dedicated driver. So make sure that this one is up to date. In the graphics section, what I normally recommend, go to global setting. In the DLSS override, click on it. Make sure that you're using latest. So you will always push the latest version of frame generation, rear reconstruction, and super resolution. Super important to do that. And it will apply to our creator. Low latency mode on. Uh, don't add the smooth motion, too much input lag. Max frame rate, uh, it's question of preference. Me, I just locked my FPS at 237 FPS because I'm using my G-Sync on a 240 Hertz monitor. And one thing can be important is your shader cache size. By default, normally it will be 5 gig. I recommend to go with 10 or 100 if you have the disk space. Uh, if you install a lot of different games, if you just have 2 to 5 games on your computer, it doesn't change anything. But if you have like 15, 20, uh, sometimes your shader cache size will be full. Each time you will relaunch a game, you will need to rebuild it. You can have corruption, stuttering, and stuff like that. So this is what I recommend for that. In the system section, if you want to use the G-Sync, make sure that you're using the G-Sync at on and on full screen and window. Make sure also that you select your monitor. Normally also on your monitor, you need to activate it. So make sure that you're doing that. In the display properties, make sure that you're using your native resolution and also the IS refresh rate available to your monitor. And for the color, I like to put my digital vibrance at 55, so 5% more. Uh, it gives you a little bit more saturation in your color. It's kind of good to, to, to do that on the Arc Raider. It's a bit gray, uh, the, the, the game. So I definitely recommend to do that. In the performance section, my power maximum is at 133%. Uh, it gives what, what it does, it's going to send more wattage to your card. So uh, you can expect like a longer boost clock. Normally, you can uh, get an optimization to 5 to 7% in your FPS. But you, knew, you need the room on your video card. So for example, if you already have bad thermals, 80, 85, it doesn't change anything. But if you have room, good thermals and stuff like that, uh, you can expect uh, more performance we're doing that now let's go to the radiant settings so now for radiant card we're gonna go to settings display first 
Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're gonna make sure that you're gonna synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're gonna go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluent motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be... 100% uh, utilization for me, so you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer, but sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed, just go to Assassin's Creed, and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in-game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging. But uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now, inside of your game. So first of all, window mode, I recommend to go with borderless full screen. This is the one that they, uh, they recommend. I don't recommend to use frame generation, honestly. Uh, too much input lag in this game. Pretty much the same thing with VSync. Disable this. Uh, I recommend to use the reflex low latency if it's available to you. After that, uh, upscaling technique for sure. Go with DLSS if you have an RTX card. Uh, it's a no-brainer. I recommend to go with quality with the transformer model. Don't use the CNN one. You want the latest version. At quality, you can expect 8% boost in your FPS. At balance, also, it can be good. You can expect like 12 to 15% boost. But I recommend balance if you're playing in 1440p or 4K. I don't recommend it at 1080p. It's too much blurry. So I'm going to go to quality. If you don't have that, you have FSR 3 available. Also, uh, I don't know if uh, Radian did a patch, but if you have for FSR 4 available because you have the latest uh, GPU from uh, Radian, definitely go with FSR 4. It's pretty good. If you only have FSR 3, go with quality. You can expect 8% boost, but it's less good than DLSS. 
For the XESS, they didn't update to the 2.0 version. You can force it with DLSS Swapper, but I didn't do a lot of testing with that. Uh, so if you're crashing or have like some issue, you know, it's a better right now. So uh, I, I'm not sure if it's working well. I did like a one minute gameplay and it it was working well. But, you know, when you're playing after 10, 15, 30 minutes, maybe it, it don't. Uh, but the thing is, XESS2 is a lot better than FSR3. So uh, I have a dedicated video. We're going to show you how to swap your file with DLSS Swapper if you want to try that. But this is pretty much it. So let's go back to DLSS like this. Field of view, I'm just playing at default. If you add more field of view, you're going to lose FPS. So really important to know that. And now those uh, graphic parameter, what I want to mention here is it's a PvP game. So right now I just want FPS and visibility. I'm still going to tell you if you're getting a lot or not uh, FPS because some people like to, you know, have some kind of immersion, have better graphics. So I'm going to tell you which one will provide you the most of your FPS. First of all, this one will take your FPS, the RTX Global Illumination. I recommend to go with static. You can expect 8% boost in your FPS. View distance, I recommend to go with medium. At low, uh, it, it's too low and you need to see a little bit more in front of you. So honestly, medium, even high if you can run it. Anti-aliasing, it doesn't really have an impact if you're already using an upscaling technique, but still put this one at low, but it doesn't change anything to your FPS. Uh, shadow, definitely go with low for your visibility. You can ex expect 7% boost in your FPS. Post-processing, 3% boost at low, but a lot... The game is less blurry. You're going to remove some bloom, lens flare, even some kind of motion blur, even if you deactivate it. Uh, so this one definitely go with low. Texture, it really depends on the amount of VRAM on your GPU. Um, so if you have 8 gig and more, go with Epic. 6 gig I, 4 gig medium, less than 4 gig, go with low. Effect and reflection, I recommend to go with low. 6% boost, but honestly, you're going to stabilize a lot your FPS. And effect with those particles and stuff like that, you can tank your FPS like crazy. So that's why I am recommend to go with low. Foliage, it's a question of visibility, but honestly, not a huge impact on your FPS. It's like 1% for each bracket. You can easily run high without any issue. Global illumination resolution, I, go, I recommend to go with low. You can expect 5% boost in your FPS. If you want the detail bar for your performance, go with detail over there. Simple will just provide you the amount of FPS, but you already have it with Steam. Or you can just disable it if you want. Idle energy saving, inactive window energy saving. Those ones you can stay at enable. It doesn't change anything. It's more like when you alt tab and stuff like that. So this is pretty much it, guys, uh, for my Arc Raider, guys. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.